not purposely uh, joining. I was checking. So once I come out from my building, okay, I'm going to check again. And I'm prepared. Don't be angry. <laughs> the chance is very high to be angry. And I see... I, okay, I was, hmm? okay with the lip. <laughs> At the beginning, I was come up with uh, the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> many times already. Last time, I was <coughs> angry. I tried to calm down, but I had some unsatisfactions on some people, not all. And I wasn't aware of my mind, like to most of the people, my mind was not ang- angry. I'm forgetting that. And my mind like to emphasize on angry on someone. And then you see that person, unsatisfactions arise, and then no more seeing, but you are not forgetting. You are seeing other people, while you are not angry in these people, but you are not aware of empty mind, like clear mind. And then the anger will be repeatedly coming. So this morning, I was noticing, once I come out, I know my mind, there was no angry. Then when I reached the dead corner, I saw two ladies, they were talking and just really like roaming, on talking. The hmm? On the platform. They are on this concrete street. Uh, yeah. So I saw them from very far place, so I'm seeing them, so I was, okay, decided to go and remind them, but it's quite far, so they are also going <laughs> to follow them. And while I'm following, I'm seeing other people. Uh, they, they are trying very, like, very calmly practicing. I'm not angry to these, these people. So, so I wear my mind. And then I follow, and then they are turning this way, this way. I had to follow. So you have to be patient. Then I catch them near this way. I saw two of you since very far distance. You two were talking all the way and you two were like uh, looking at the sceneries all the way. So don't do this. And mindful, you must mindful your meditation's mind. And you, you must walk separately. Individuals should not hang around. Okay? Ah, it's okay. Then finish. Then I continue. <laughs> then I, I reach near to the bus stopping there. <coughs> and the blue bus got the posters with Seador's pictures and the Seador's teachings. There are many, many things. And three ladies were reading these. <laughs> and someone is copying, <laughs> copying these. And I go and remind them, this is not the copying time, this is not the reading time, okay? Ah, okay, okay, okay. And then we left again. Then I come out, then, uh, yeah, uh, and one old lady uh, in the sitting meditation time, and she always meant this, and uh, standing meditation time, she cannot stand till to the end. Five minutes later, she's sitting down already. And uh, walking meditation time, she will be talking. I, I always see this. So I saw that lady. Uh, she was just roaming, only roaming. And then I said, why, why you're not practicing in one place? I, I see you in many places. Why you're uh, doing this, so try to practice in one place like that. And then I saw uh, like some people, they they are meditating like like with 
bending down head, very serious, like a very stiffing body. Like too serious. And when I see that unsatisfaction <coughs> arise in my mind, I, I'm always reminding, be natural, be natural, be relaxed. They are not relaxed. They are too focused. And I know this. That lady is joining this retreat many times already, but she's going on that way, very serious. And when she walks, she will never move her head like that. And she is very unhealthy. Whenever she joins the retreat, something serious happened to her, sick, and emergency, we had to send her to the clinics many times, hospital many times, and she is a very experienced meditator. She joined many retreats before. So I can notice how she was practicing. She was emphasizing on the physical stability too much. And then that physical stability becomes extreme. And that can cause your health, the health to be poor. Rigid. Yeah, rigid, rigid muscles, rigid nerves. That's happened. That's. You must be very flexible and relaxed. And these kind of persons cannot easily smile. Uh, they really like the the isolated. They really like to stay alone. That kind of character you will see. And a bit, a bit easy to depress, easy to uh, like unhappy. They've been practicing long time meditating, but that's not an improvement because it's not the right way. They're not practicing the right way, They're not getting in the right track. They try very hard, but. <coughs> Another lady. So what, 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 what do you do with this kind of meditators? So I, I must remind them to be relaxed. Relax. Just relax. And they like to focus on one object. Just tie in one object. And habits, it becomes their habits. So they will suggest only this is the Dhamma. The rest are Adama. And with this kind of uh, understanding they are practicing. And that's not true. Whatever you must be able to use as your meditation object, the sounds, the weather, the people, the pace, whatever. The mind has the nature of noticing on the most noticeable sense. So if you are forcing like the pain is very noticeable, but you are forcing on the other <coughs> objects. You suggest this is the only object, and then if you will be <coughs> very stiff, the mind will be rigid and tired. You, you will be tiredly meditating. So meditation is not not tiring. It should not be tiring. It should be a very relaxing. So I had that experience of meditating like five hour sessions, sitting five hours, standing five hours, like that. I did it before. And I found myself after that five hour session finished, I felt very relaxed. It was not tearing. The whole body was really like fully rested, very relaxed. To be able to practice like five hours continuous, you must have the quality totally let go. Totally let go your body. Not your body, whatever happened, let it happen. Then the mind is not struggling, the mind is relaxed. And because of standing, sitting, the pace, unbalance of four elements, it's nothing. It's nothing serious. 
nothing serious then will happen. Maybe after finish the sessions, the pain will be still remaining about maybe 10 minutes. Then later on it will go it will back to normal within very short times. Nothing bad can happen. And one lady, she's been staying here for a long time already. I know quite a problematic one. Wherever she stay, a problem with someone, and she asks me, complain me, uh, let me move to another building. And I know the problem will come. Another building and another problem come, complain about other somebody. And she's been rounding the meditation centers long time already now, getting here. <laughs> and I saw her walking and the mouth is like saying something, all the way saying something, uh, chanting or doing something. And I saw her from very far place doing this. So I, I drew, go near to her and I talk to her. What are you saying? This is this is the walking meditation time. This is not the saying time. This is not the chanting time. And she said, she is sharing metta, sharing loving kindness. So this is not the sharing loving kindness time. This is the walking meditation time. I remind her. But she said, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Then she turned to that way. And I, I walked this way. I, I was just behind her and I saw her. She was, she was standing somewhere at the corner. At the, and then she was doing something strange. Uh, like she was standing and raised up uh, this like three times. Three times. And she bowed her head and raised up and turned, turned to my side and she saw me. And then she was laughing. <laughs> I was also laughing. I would do some you know, stretching, and then I turn around. Oh, who said that? So, uh, like sharing love and kindness. Yeah. But you are practicing this walking meditation, sitting meditation. You are you are practicing for your upeka, the equanimous, the the indifference quality to be stronger. So to be equal of everybody. That's, that's quality you will get. Like pain and no pain, cold and hot, no difference. When you really get that quality, your loving kindness will be the greatest loving kindness. Be like your your love one and your hate one, you will have equal mind. Like your family members and the strangers, you will have equal mind. Then this will become the greatest loving kindness. So no need to be like purposely sharing loving kindness. And if you are sharing this kind of way, uh, like you have to like, take of something, there is something, someone with this idea you have to share. So, when you are really doing practical meditation style, sitting meditation style, standing meditation style, walking meditation style, emphasize on this original truth, the original truth. Forget about create the truth, then sitting times. But when you are not doing this in the normal life, do not let go of this creed the truth. You must uh, in the middle like that. And the real vipassana has no formula. Cannot give you the formula. It's impossible. Because vipassana is many different ways of observations. So uh, when I was joining a retreat before, the teacher told us, Yog Tao Nan Shu method. Yog means, Rupa means physical. 
So tau means like pointing like this. This. So pointing the physical and nan chu is nan is nama is the mental. Checking your mental. Pointing the physical and checking the mental. Yes. This is one method. And I never heard about nan tau nan shu. Nan tau nan shu means pointing the mental, checking the mental. So pointing the mental means pointing the previous minds. Pointing the previous mind and checking the present minds. So sometimes like the mind's nature blindly like to depress without any reason. Blindly like to bore. That's the nature. Blindly like to unsatisfy. That's that's the nature. So point that mental and check that this present mental. That's non top na shoot. So you must change, you must be able to change your meditation's way accordingly. No fixed formula. So each, each person will have different, will be practicing different, different method. So I cannot guide the same way. This morning when I was walking, I felt a little disappointed, a little depressive, kind of heavy. Mm. And uh, thoughts arise. Uh, Heavy thoughts and things like this. Um, you can push the thoughts away and things like this when you walk. So I, I was thinking, I try to locate in my mind where sits the heaviness while I'm walking. And uh, I was looking just in my mind and then the, the thoughts disappeared and I felt much better. Yeah. So when you're practicing, you must base on Anatta truth. The physical is anatta, not no self. It's happening itself, up from the self desires. Mental, the same, the, the, the subconscious, the, that one is up from, it's beyond your ability. So nobody wants to have depressed minds, angry minds, wandering minds, thinking minds, but it's happen. That's why it's called anatta, no self. Don't take that mind as my mind. And if you take, you will be angry with your mind. You will be fighting with your own mind. You will be problem. With, with the mental process. Yeah. Somebody goes into the mental process, the thoughts. Mm. It's like feeding the mental process. You give it attention and you will be there. But if you go in the mind and try to locate it physically somehow, it's so rare to hear that kind of guidance in the meditation centers. Uh, I never heard from the other centers. It's my own understanding. Creation. Not creation. That's my own understanding. So I'm just sharing. So don't trust it. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh, I have the same insight. Yeah. I think I would find it hard because I don't really look for my past minds. So I check my mind, I check my current mind with my current something else. But I, you know, the past I just totally forget. When you are unable to mindful my, your mind nicely, uh, not strong enough yet, you cannot catch. You don't, you cannot know what is happening in your past minds unknowingly going on. This is subconscious mind, habitual mind. It's habitually going on and you are not aware. Lazy, depressing, that's... So the Nanta Nanshu, you can only do if you're super mindful? No, when you have quite a strong... If you just go on, not give up, however depressing, just continuing, the way is just to go on. Yes. So this morning, uh, after the breakfast, before starting walking meditation sessions, I was inside my building, and one of the monks came to me. Uh, you might know him. 
the one you always confess, mm-hmm. the young monk, he said, uh, Uzen, I am leaving. Mm-hmm. And he said, he is going to stay in the other monasteries, in Molanya. He said, why? Right. And he said, oh, it's not so okay here. The monks staying together in the same buildings are not quite wisey. And, oh, well, you have to. And I said, okay, up to you, it's up to you, but there will be no perfect place. So you, it really depends on your mind only how you are deciding. So, like I said, I talk friendly. This, in this center, I'm trying to try my best to uh, calm down the situations, but I thought I cannot control the monks yet. I can I can control the people, the nuns. Uh, quite, they are quite okay. I can control quite I'm well. You control the monks. You're the abbot. You're the you're the owner of this place. You I'm not the owner. I'm not the abbot. I'm not the abbot, and I'm not. Uh, purposely getting here to become an airport. Coincidentally, I'm reaching here and I become like taking responsibilities here without instructions from somebody. I myself want to take responsibilities to take care of the people to be able to eat nicely, to be stay nicely. Then, then I become like an in charge of automatically, but I have very low losses. And in, in our monks' traditions, we must pay respect to the higher worlds of monks. I understand that you are the <coughs> higher in this place. I, Even though you are not I don't want people to call me Sayyaro. I know. I don't want it. I, I don't like it. <laughs> but you can decide not to kick people out. Yeah. And you are just an Otomasara student. So if you if you decide, okay, this monk is not proper, even though he has 60 wasa, you just call Sayyara Otomasara. You say, yeah, this monk is this, this, and this, that. You just kick him out. No, Sayyara would not say that. No, no. no. Don't, <laughs> out, don't kick out, treat that monk nicely. You will say that. You know, I know. <laughs> yeah, many difficult situations. So I will never call to Sayyara. Mm. I will never do it. I know. And he told us about his past thought who come to her mind, to his mind, right? So what's happening if it's the future thought who come with you? How yeah. Could we yeah. control that? Walking meditation times, like the, the mind doesn't like to stay at the present. It's like to stay in the past or the future. The plans, good ideas, right? good, good plans, like to come. And it is so pleasant, sometimes getting very good ideas. And people don't want to stop, want to be rolling in that, that thoughts. So, however it's good, you must stop. You must remind yourself, uh, this is not a thinking time, this is not a planning time. So if you are just continuing, then you are not meditating, you are planning, dreaming, attaching on it. And I can tell you that your plans will not come true outside. Mostly, uh, how many percents of your plans come true outside? Maybe 0% or 1%. Yeah, 99% are extra. We are very, very uh, used to with that habitually planning a lot. So the minds cannot stay quiet, calm. The mind is searching something to do. So nothing special to do, you will start thinking. So you will waste lots of your energy by thinking. So if you are not thinking, not planning too much, when you really do something, you can do it fully. Now I am not thinking. That's why when I'm teaching, I just talk anyhow. 
it's okay. <laughs> Last time I was totally different. I was a dreamer. When I was young, I was always dreaming, thinking, planning a lot, too much. If I have so many girlfriends, how oh, it will be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's never happened. <laughs>
body with bamboo and they burn, they fire. So like that bamboo, both ends are burnt and the middle part of bamboo is is dirty with the feces. So this bamboo is useless one. This bamboo is useless. <laughs> so nobody wants to use that bamboo to build the building or nobody wants to use that bamboo as a firewood. Useless one. Like that. If you are a monk and if you have unstable mind, you lost your normal life, lay life. And you are not getting from monk life. Useless monk. That's so if you if you really if you become a monk, stay as a monk. Then only you will get the benefits from monk monk life. If you become a monk and then willing to uh, hungry your lay life, you cannot fully enjoy your lay lay life. And you are not getting from you have no confidence, you have confused, you will have regrets with yourself. Although I'm a monk, I cannot stay as a monk. <coughs> your mind will not happy. So when you, if you want to do something, do it fully. If you don't want to do, don't do at all. If you don't want to stay as a monk, stay as a lay life. Enjoy it. It's not a mistake. And nobody will complain you. A lay person staying as a lay person, nobody can complain that. As I see it, that most people are mentalists. They live in a mental world, emotional world, and then how they deal with their minds. When you tell them, uh, keep your mind calm, and they don't know what their mind is. And, uh, or the energetics of the body, for example, when you walk, I always feel the tingling in my feet, in my hands. I, to, to stop my mental process and just focus on something else. For example, the energetics, the movement, the sensation in the body when I walk. Instead of being fixated on thoughts that arise. Because as soon as I put my awareness to the thoughts, I try to control them, I try to stop them, it doesn't work. I always come. So it's a fight against the wind in this. So you have to put your attention on shift to something. You can know where is the what's the mind, where is the mind from practical only. It's impossible to explain you where is the mind, what is the mind, because mind is not existing permanently. No mind is, but <coughs> mind has the nature of knowing, knowing the senses. So this is the nature of mind. Mind is the nature of feeling and perceptions, memory, that's, that's the nature of the mind. So, but that feelings are not existing, permanently existing. No memory is permanently existing, like, you know, not remembering back about the past, not thinking about the future, it is not permanently existing. Only when the cause, like, especially like when you are doing something constantly, and then memories like to come, remembering back about the past, remembering about the future. It's like the cost is high for your your memories to to be changing, and the effect come. But wouldn't it be better to keep the attention on the thoughts without trying to control them, no, and exactly. preserve them? No. And you can observe your thoughts because they always come. Okay. Yes, of course. Uh, but how, without thinking about the thoughts or without getting affected of the thoughts? So that you go. Yes. So you have to have distance with your thoughts. So if you observe them from a different point of view, for example, if I'm more in my body and my body is peaceful and I'm okay, thoughts arising, I can watch uh, somehow thoughts arriving from my body mind. <laughs> yeah, because I, I believe my mind is around my body. So you have more distance to your mind, it's a bit more like just a process exactly. and you're constantly coming about. Yeah. 
He is like I'm walking on their clouds. I, I can chase the clouds away. I can control them. You'll be always there. But I don't have to watch them all the time. Right? So I can. So why why the thoughts like to arise? It's attachment is the main cause. Attachment. Uh, for example, like you have nothing special to do. You are totally free, and you are sitting on a chair. And then, uh, like you will minus that attachment, you want to do something, hungry for something, or uh, like let's say for me, like I am leading this center, so how I will plan, what I will do, the building, how I will build, the water, how I will, and sitting, and you you are start thinking if. The attachment is so strong on this center, thinking you you won't be able to stop. It's like, and if you are always, whenever you free, you like to play game, and when you free, the willingness thinking about the game will come. And uh, let's say when you are free, and uh, you you used to chatting with your loved one. And that willingness will come. The thoughts, thinking will come. That's the reason. Yes. Attachment, habitual, habitual. So this is also my own experience. When I was in Singapore, when I was walking on the ship, my first job, it was three day on, three day off. So. Three days continuously staying on the ships. I have my own room, a nice room. I don't need to do any things. I'm just standing by, just eat, sleep. I'm really free. If only the office give order to supply this fuel to watch ships, and then this time only I would walk. Rest of the time we are free. Mostly I, I was free, and the internet is available. On the ships, of course, so boring. You are surfing and chatting. Then I, I met a girl online. <laughs> <laughs> only one girl. Yeah, only one girl. Yes, because I I was very interested in meditation, so I was surfing in meditation about meditation and. Yeah, of course. Like that, that girl was has had a meditation experience in Goengaji centers. I had the experience meditating in Goengaji centers, and then we were sharing about meditation <laughs> at the beginning. Meditations, uh, and it's so pleasant. Of course, a a man and a woman talking is so. So free, so whenever free, like this only. And that time she was in Yangon, I was in Singapore, a Myanmar girl. And she is so free. I I was so free. She just she was finished her medical, and she was waiting. Like she don't want to walk as a doctor in Myanmar. She want she wants to go and stay in U.S. Waiting for the times to get something. Uh, her mother is there, so she is so free. Then chanting, meditation, and we were not, we do not see each other, never see each other outside. But it was about, I think about two years. Wow. Two years. You chat with this girl for two years. Yeah. 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 Never see yeah, outside we we have never see each other, but we become so familiar, like so close to each other already. And I'm knowing, like if if we see each other, there will be the relationships. Oh, I don't want it. I want to end my life in a meditation center only. Like <laughs> that. I'm already told, telling her these things. I will end my life in a meditation center. Only. I never have uh, the idea to have relationships. I'm telling her, but 
she, she is getting to Singapore to wait for the times. <laughs> to wait for the times uh, because her two brothers are in Singapore. They become the Singaporean citizens, uh, Myanmar people, but they, they apply for that and they got that. And I know that I was on the ships and she is already in Singapore. I don't want to go and see her. But if if I go and see her, the relationships will be there. I don't know. So I'm giving excuse. And on my off day, I'm coming down from my ship. She knows that. But I give excuse. I'm not free. I have somewhere to go. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I try to escape from that. But you cannot, you know, and not knowingly, coincidentally, my home is in the middle. One brother stayed here, one brother stayed here. <laughs> it was like very well planned. Very well planned. Someone very well planned like that. I did not know. It happened. She knew you were avoiding her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she knew. She knew. And no choice. You were being trapped. We, we were very happy, very free. She was very free. Nothing to do, just waiting for the times. And then she she got temporary job. And that job is also very free job, very relaxed job. Uh, like the job is just nearby her home life. Like one, two bus stops away from the home, like that. So, uh, then you cannot avoid it. We were just hanging around like very close friends. I never started because I, I don't want that relationships. But long time. And we know each other, we have to be parted one day, separate. She will go away one day. And then when the time is right, she left. And I'm remaining in the country with heart broken. <laughs> you did meet her in real life? Hmm? You did meet her, right? Of course. And then what happens? Of course, we become like a very close you, friends. You were going out together or not? Yeah, of course. Three days on, three days off. So you were lovers? Hmm? You were lovers <laughs> You cannot say like love. It's like it looks like friends, very very close friends. Friends with benefits. You're really curious about that. I I cannot imagine how you could you know attracted to each other for two years on the internet, then you see each other and then you're only friends. neighbors. We are neighbors. I swear, you know, <laughs> spiritual sisters. Neighbors. Well, at least your Ubeka was really good, I guess. We, we are like going to buy the onions, potato together, <laughs> and then along. Oh, you know, have you ever been to Singapore? Who, who's been to Singapore? Yeah. I was, I was staying in Pioneer MRT, nearby at Pioneer MRT, and there is Bonley Shopping Center, walking distance. We walk just Hanging around to uh, she and me, we were going all the time, like then <laughs> buying something, coming back, uh, that talking, and even I bring her to join Seattle's retreat. She knows Seattle, and that time she Seattle was coming to Malaysia fast and coming into Singapore. So we, we two going together to Malaysia and directly joining Seattle's retreat and then we follow back to Singapore and she know her. <laughs> and now she is there. So of course at the beginning like you feel like really like hell like thinking, 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 thinking you cannot stop it. But now I can stop. I'm very sure I'm, I'm not missing her I'm not, because the mind is, especially after I become a monk. You because see, being as a monk and you are missing a girl is 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 like shouldn't be. And if the mind is not 
creating is not a pleasant one. The hungriness, if you, you stop it, then it stops. So I, I don't care whether she is getting the new one or whatever, let it be. She's in the US now? Yeah. And the times, the time is very helping. US and here is different times. Here is the day, there is the night. Mm-hmm. Like opposite one. That's hell. Otherwise you will still be gentle. No, no, I, I reduce. After parting, I purposely reduce. She, of course, for her, she, she has difficulties. She, she wants to, uh, she wanted to start the relationships, but I, I was the one who stopped. <laughs> you want to be a monk, she wants to be in the US, so how does she want to do that? Huh? Maybe one day she will become a nun. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Bikumis are no more federal, sir. That's not so good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we should not start chatting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you can end up somewhere you don't want to. Huh? So the Buddhas teach to the monks, uh, and Buddhas nearly died. Then Ananda asks to Buddha, Buddha, how, how we have to deal with the women? And Buddha said, don't look at them. <laughs> and, and Ananda said, sometimes we have no chance, no choice, and we have to communicate with people. And then, then Buddha said, if no chance, don't talk to them. <laughs> and if sometimes no chance, I, it's impossible not talking. Then Buddha said, okay, if you have no chance to talk to the woman, uh, just, just uh, suggest like your own brother, your own sister, your mother, the mother age, you suggest it as your mother. The elder one, you suggest as your elder sister. The younger one, you suggest it as your younger sister. With that kind of mind, you must talk. But do not talk unnecessary extra. That's a teaching. That's why we are breaking the rules. We talk a lot to the girl. <laughs> That's why we need to confess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, why aren't the girls just drinking tea in this place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the okay. attachment, that, that's the nature. Buddha teach many things in Abhidhamma, very detailed in the physical. So, man's physical nature, woman's physical nature, man's mental nature, phys- woman's mental nature. Yeah, difference. Uh, it's called Eti Bhava. Bhava means nature. Eti means uh, the females. Uh, so, sorry. Yeah, eighty is female. Bom bawa, bom is male. Bawa is nature. So in the physical, they are nature. Male's nature is stronger, harder like that. And female's nature is softer, gentle like that. And the thinkings, uh, the mental feelings nature are different. Uh, Women like to feel more. They, they like to decide something according to their feelings. They like to follow their feelings. That's in general. In general, that's, that's the nature. So man's a bit logical than the females. So maybe because of my logical thinking, we, we didn't have relationships. We didn't have... <laughs> But I know, because I was so close to her, and she likes to follow the feelings. Uh, Sometimes she uh, she was complaining about her sister, the elder sister, telling me about this, and I listened from her, uh, because she follow lots of feelings, how, he, how she feels, and decide. 
But if they follow feelings, but then they meditate, yeah. then how can you follow the feelings with Ubekka? Yeah. If, if like that, that male nature, female nature also should be in balance. If someone has that balanced nature, that person is a very smart one. So female and male come together if they are highly meditators. Yeah, the decisions, whatever, are quite correct. They can do that, that proper decision like that. If you are like very logical and very, very tough one, and then you are quite, you will be quite problematic one. Like you will be quite a rigid, rigid person. And if you are too flexible, like following the rule, following the feelings, and then you will easily cry, and, and that's, that's kind of highly emotional, and you cannot make decisions calmly. So it should be in balance. Sometimes you have to follow the feelings as well, <laughs> and you should not be too rigid. And we do this actually in uh, meditation method, for example, to be balanced actually in the emptiness space. And uh, that, is, that is the reason, that is one of the reasons why Buddha stopped <coughs> that Bhikkhuni Sasana. So because he know whatever arises will pass away. And Buddha's teachings, even Buddha's teachings arise and pass away. So like younger and older and dying, that's so now it's like Buddha is no more alive, and but his teachings are still remaining. It's more than half already. It's showing the signs of decreasing. So even the monks are not not willing to follow the rules strictly like before, like previous previous monks. So yeah, even the men are not willing to follow, and if they are women monks, they're following the feelings. It will was. Yeah, that is one of the reasons. They also have more rules. Mm, they are many rules. Men can be metal, can be used, women can be more. I think men can be more. Yes, of course, it's more because we have both parts. We talk now about the majority of what is existing. It's not much better than that. Yeah, but I don't remember past life. So maybe if if I imagine sometimes like if that bhikkhuni sasana is still remaining, like uh, man monk and woman monk, like bhikkhuni and they are the woman monk, the same level. And uh, if there is, there will be many relationships <laughs> between monk and the bhikkhuni. <laughs> Because if someone is not not enlightened yet, the cravings, anger, they still cannot control the ignorance. And if they follow that, the problems will arise a lot. And the Bhikkhuni, they need to meet the monks twice a week, right? Yeah. So you cannot have just a monastery with Bhikkhuni somewhere else. No, they need to have contact with the monks twice a week. So it's the same thing with the monks, aren't they? If you are smoking. No, the nuts they can just do whatever they want. Yeah, but they're still around. Yeah, but they don't need to meet the monks. Yeah, but they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the choice, I guess. Is there a thing that's in the teachers in Burma? They are, but very less. It's a degree sexist. Yeah, the women can control it. The women can control it. Yeah, they can control it. Yeah, yeah. What I was mentioning before, you are exempted from that. I was talking in general. No, no, you were thinking about the bullies because you say that they have to meet monks, but the problem is the monk cannot control. The monk cannot control. You see, we can control. I have to take care of this topic. 
is quite sensitive one. The man's side is, we have no problem when I share this part. The woman's side is <laughs> So then there will be like because of the Indian set house, and there might be, you know, like if the monk is attracted to the to the Bikuni and the Bikuni is attracted to the monk, then something can happen. Yeah. That's a nature. That's a nature. Women like to impress on men. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but that's why I don't think they are allowed. You're not allowed to be attractive um, to, to a woman. So it's the same. You don't have. You, you don't allow to be attractive to a woman. I can be, but I need to. I need to try to do this. So it's the same for men. You don't have to. I don't know. <laughs> for a nun, it's the same for a nun as a bikuni. Yes, it's very exactly. yes, but a nun doesn't have to meet the, the bikus twice a week. The bikunis have. The nun can choose to. Yeah. You, you know, you're a really beautiful nun, and all these monks are following you, and you're really, you know, bothered by it. You want to meditate. You just go somewhere else and you can do what you want. You can live everywhere you want. You can buy a house. You can, you know. You have nuns that just can't use money. It's like you were saying, a nun is kind of like a lay person that is just wearing some robes and showing that she's a nun. But the bikuni needs to meet the monks. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I want to say the attractive, when you have attractive, attraction. Attraction. Yes. It's not only about the sex. You can be attractive about Yes, yes, of course. But there are monks that were not. So it's the same for it doesn't have to be sex, but it can also be remarks about how they look. Oh, you're so beautiful. Yeah, but you, know, you can't be with your with your friend. But it's probably it has much less likely. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I'm also so nice touching in, but there's there's no lust in talk, you know, it is. But yeah, with but a woman it can be a bit uh, Yeah, but it can be it much would be the same. No, no, because my mental, my, my mentality is something different. This is just friendly touch. But you know, but when I know someone who could be the same. You understand? It's called homosexuality. Yeah, that's what that doesn't exist between most. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's what it is. Even in a lay person's life, you can get enlightenment. You can get enlightenment. If, if like Loba, Dosa, Moha are free, you can enlighten even as a lay person. So that's not a big issue. One. Buddha is not emphasizing on some subjects. That is not leading towards Nibbana. Maybe if he is teaching so many uh, subjects, and uh, if it is not leading towards Nibbana, it's just wasting the time. Like, he never teach about uh, what's the, what is the starting of samsara. That is just wasting the time. Like that. So, some people ask some questions to him, and he didn't answer this. This is just wasting the time. So, like, uh, like science, science, or some some knowledge. Uh, like my father, my father is so attached to his his understandings. Uh, he is an engineer, and he's so attached on that. So now he is seventy-seven years old, already old, retired six long time ago. But he cannot stop that. Uh, he likes to involve in whatever feels like he wants to give advice or uh, if he hears someone is talking about something, he will start searching in the, in the books and how he must give advice. That's uh, uh, still busy. And he's so proud about himself. That's, so I wanted to uh, re- 
remind him just uh, but I got a chance one time that time we were coming from Yangon to here by a bus we two were sitting together my father and me were sitting together on the same bench and I got a chance then he told me uh, Lin, I got invited to a wedding wedding uh, that wedding was uh, their walking colleague's daughter like that so they give he, he got a seat the table VIP table yes. all the high rank officers the <coughs> director general or its ministers all of his teachers actually his his seniors and they were sitting and he said Listen, I was there and I saw Wu Nian Le who 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 all are very very destroyed he said it's really ruined very old already got paralyzed or someone coming with the wheelchair cannot talk already like uh, like happening like this and then he said he was the most active one he was the most strongest one and after listening to him I remember like when I was young I was always hearing about his seniors he talking about his seniors they are very smart people very very intelligent people they know so much and like I told you I was grow up in that area so we always hear that technical terms like that uh, lead production, silver production, the factory is big one and when the machines got break down these percents they, they really know how to fix it so I was so envy to these percents before and now they are really old and they are going to die very soon then I talked to my father Father, you see, they were very smart. They were very intelligent. I, I, I was hearing from you, but they are going to die very soon. Ten years is never sure for them already. So after they die, whether they, that their knowledge can support them for good life, next life, or not. Whatever arises has to pass away. Yeah, they have to leave it. We have to leave it. So that that knowledge is is yeah it cannot support to escape from the samsara. But you you are not getting these knowledges automatically. You have to pay things from the KG. You have to learn A B C D and then like the university for long years. And then you start going into a job from very junior stage and then you are getting the rank. And then when the time is right, you have to retire. And from that time somewhat, you have to leave it. So do not spend your time in these things. And you must, you must emphasize on that, that greatest knowledge that uh, how to break the samsara that that wisdom so that can support not only this life many lives that that will help so to for my my father's proudness to reduce i was telling him yeah uh, there was a monk before famous as enlightened I, I like his teaching the most he was not he was not not so famous like the other monks he liked to stay quiet that monk and uh, one time that monk was near, that time there was not much media like now no internet no journals that was that time only the radio news and the newspaper, only one newspaper in our country. That monk never read a newspaper, never listen to radio news. That kind of monk. 
He don't know what government is ruling the country, that kind of monk. But that time, uh, people were trying to go to the moon. Nobody been to the moon yet, so they are inventing the spacecraft to go there. And uh, the news come from radio and the newspaper then So people are reading this, listening this, and then they, they, they are talking each other, chatting each other. Possible, not possible. It's too far, how can... And they come and ask to this monk. So, Venerable Sir, are there any uh, teachings from Buddha? Whether people can get to the moon or not, are there any teachings of that? And uh, uh, the monk said, yeah, whatever happening in the world, you, you, if you check it, you, it cannot escape from these two, two things. Either one or this or this. So the one, this one is called Sankata and this one is called Asankata. So Sankata means not free from Sankara. Not free from creations. And this one is called free from creations. So he gave an example. He clapped the hand and the sounds arise. So that sound is not blindly arise, it's because of creations. Depends on your creations. If you if you strike hard with force, the sound will loud. If you clap slowly and the sound will low. If you clap like continuously then the sound seems like it's continuously ringing like that. But no more cause, no more effect. So whatever Whatever things like not free from creations like to arise and pass away, impermanent one. That is called uh, Sankata. Sankata. And Asankata is before you clapping the hand, there was no sound. The quietness is there. So if you not create anything, that quietness will be permanent permanently existing and not arising and nothing to pass away. So that is called uh, asankata. Uh, that is th- that nature is nibbana nature, permanent nature. Calm, peaceful, that's so the our mind our mind has that nibbana nature. The anger, the grief, the laziness, the depression is not blindly arise. The mind is calm. Automatically it is calm, peaceful. But if we are thinking, oh no, it's boring, or it's good, it's bad, that's pleasant, that's unpleasant. Because of our mind's thinking, creations, that bad minds like to arise. So if you are, if we are not create, it will not rest. So like, like the, uh, like the degrees, PhD, you are not getting automatically because of creations, not free from creations, and it is not permanent. After arise, it has to pass away. At least <coughs> when you die, you have to leave it. So whatever belongings you have, you are not blindly getting it, you have to create. Even if you get it as your heritage from the parents, you have to uh, uh, maintain like protections. Yes, you need it. So that is not permanent. Whatever arises likes to pass away. Impermanent nature, never sure one. The moon, he said, okay, so uh, they will not automatically get into the moon. They need creations. So if the creations are enough, there are enough causes, yeah, there will be the effect. They might be rich to the moon, the monk said like that. that. But that is, uh, they need to uh, create, invent, fill up the uh, fuels, uh, controlling the one, and that is not uh, 
precious like that. So Buddha is not teaching these things. Buddha teach this way of to leading towards Nibbana. The real peace, real fulfillment, permanent. If someone has someone don't have the sun yet, no worries arise for the sun. No fears, no worries, no anger, nothing. The mind is calm, but you have when you have sun, you have worries or something arise for the sun. So you are, the sun is not blinding. You are not blindly getting not free from creations. You mean your child? Yeah. You mean yeah. the shiny sun? The, chi- the, okay. the ch- child. But life has to go on. We already get life. Let's say some already have sun, some already have these things. We have to go on. But uh, we must have right understanding. What is what can give you the real fulfillment, what will not give you the real fulfillment? You must know. Actually, to get the real happiness, we don't need that much. If we cannot read at all, if we cannot write at all, as well, we we can live our life happily, healthily. And you can understand many things. When you have that uh, that uh, Nibbana wisdom, you can understand the other things easily. It's not difficult. There was this monk, I forgot his name. He was a farmer and he couldn't read the rice and he became an Anna. Yeah, so long Seattle. He was a farmer and he was such a uh, dumb. Idiot like that, so difficult to learn. He tried to learn, but he can't. He can't remember these things like that kind of person. And then he stay just stay normally. Only when he old, uh, he got married, a farming, far, farming business, a farmer only. But that year, all of the businesses what he's doing become very successful. Everything becomes fine. Then. Uh, there was a joke, like, if everything fine, you are going to die. <laughs> that, that joke. And he, he memorized that. And then his blindly, blind fears arise in his mind. I think I'm going to die. Why this year everything is fine? <laughs> uh, so, so he was thinking, what to do, what to do because of the fears. And he was asking to many people, what I can do? I think I'm going to die. And one person gave advice to him, just meditate. <laughs> and that time, long time ago, there was not much meditation centers, not much teachers, not, not like now. So he said, I am totally uneducated. Is it possible for uneducated person to meditate or not? And the, the man said, why not? It's so easy, you just mindful your breath. That's the instructions. Did he say a location like yeah. here or just no no just just, just be mindful of breath. yeah just just mindful the breath because the the instructor also don't know well about meditation <laughs> <laughs> yeah just that and then he stopped mindful of the breath and like he whatever he is doing like uh, farming doing this and he was on the breath. He has to cut the grass for the cows to feed. That time he's on the bread all the times. And then his mind becomes pure, calmer. And then wisdom comes itself. And he understood himself and he becomes enlightened. Not only enlightened, he got the supernatural power, the samatha power, remembering back about the past, past lives. And he remembered, he was a monk. 
He was he was a rector monk from Hmong University. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> no. no, he was a, a king's teacher. A king's teacher. Oh, wow. Yeah, in in our Myanmar history, we we had to learn the history. Uh, Manuha King is a famous king. His teacher monk. So in that life, he he knows so much. He know uh, scriptural knowledge. He he was a rector. Now an uh, uneducated one. So if you really can remember the past lives, nothing to proud with this life, nothing to depress with this life. Already, like we, we were rotating in samsara in many lives, and nothing to set uh, because of your relative die or parents die. We already had this experience so many times. Yeah. Uh, when I was going and teaching in Bagan, near Bagan, I was there and I got a room and there was a book. There was a book beside my bed, so I was reading that and there was a story. Uh, during Buddha's time, uh, father and son, they do love each other very much, but the father died. So the son was so sad. He cannot, he cannot forget his father. So he was grieving for a long time. So he was asking to many people, like, "Oh, my father died. Or where, where he can be now? Now where he can be? What life he can be?" Ask to many people. So many people think, "Oh, he is crazy already. His father died long time ago, and he cannot forget it yet." And then one time. He asked to one person, then the third person said, I don't know, but Boda might know. Boda is getting in our country. He is teaching to people. He is going on strong now. You go and ask to Boda. So that, that young man go and see Boda. And he asked to Boda, Boda, um, do you know where my father is now? He asked these questions. And Boda asked him back, which father you are asking? <laughs> Only these questions. And then he suddenly realized that the wisdom really appeared. Oh, of course. Uh, I met many fathers already, like seeing and parting, seeing and parting. So nothing to be very sad. to be like heart broken like we, we already we already parted like the the loved one like in our dog's life uh, dog's boyfriends girlfriends we already had this experience so many times don't be too sad <laughs> that's nothing We don't remember about our fly, fly's life. We had that experience, but that with your fly lover. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, these flies, you know, for one day. It's like yeah, that. maybe your ex-life mm, girlfriend. The flies might be your ex-life girlfriend. Yes, who knows? Who knows? That's why he's coming and resting on your skin. Long time never see you. Maybe he was my, my wife. <laughs> that's why we're sleeping. That's why we're sleeping together now. <laughs> Maybe you were my father in the past life. That's why Buddha said samsara was too long, too many lives. So whoever sitting inside this hall were related to each other anyhow in the previous lives lives, one life. Maybe we were the siblings or anyhow it could be. Maybe that time mm, I was a woman and they were a man. 
it could be. So nothing to be thinking like man, Any oh man, it's not up, it's not fair. No, it, it's rotation. It's anyhow, it's changing. It would be so funny. I would be sitting there, you would be sitting here, and you're the monk, and I'm like, can we not come be cookies? <laughs> one of a reincarnation story, the real one that the, the observer observed that. So a father was changing the diapers of a baby. I think he started talking two years ago. And the baby was looking at the father's face and the baby said, when I was in your age, I change your diapers. <laughs> so that, that, that child is the reincarnation of grandfather. So this life, he is the father, you are the child. And previous life, you were the child and he was the father. That's crazy, huh? <laughs> there were some cases, there were. <laughs> I would be shocked if the baby just tells me to chase my diapers before you. Yeah. One monk, monk said that that's the reason he, he got so so many so many bad youngsters because he don't care about our grandparents. <laughs> Reincarnation cases. Uh, there was an association. They they really emphasize on these when they hear that a child is talking about somewhere in the past, and they come, they ask to the child, the parents, and then they go to the place where the child is mentioning, and they check, and they found the reality. Many many cases. young, like two years old, he was playing, like acting in the movies. And their families were never related to the that movies. Things. And he, he will be like acting and then he will shout, action! <laughs> and that's kind of, kind of uh, play. So the mother was so, uh, like, why? My son is always doing this. And one night, the boy was sleeping in the bed and he talked to the mother. Mommy, I, I was someone before in the Hollywood, he said. <laughs> and the mom was shocked. And then he said, I had two sons in that life, but I cannot remember their names now. And he said, why I cannot remember their names? Why I cannot remember my names? And he started crying. <laughs> started crying. And the mother was... Uh, but then she was very curious about that and she stopped uh, reading the, the Hollywood books. Then one time they were reading a Hollywood book and then the boy was coming and looking and then Mama, here, uh, this is George and this is me. <laughs> and he pointed that. And one look at that. Then there was no names, no title. But it was a very old movie. Then, then the mother cut that picture and she sent that picture to, to someone who is studying about that reincarnation cases. And he wrote the paper, he wrote the letter and he sent it and then they, they try to trace and then they found, yeah, this is George, George Bess, uh, 
the actor, the famous actor in 1950, something like that. And the other one, yeah, we cannot find who is that one. That one is not a famous one, a side, side pass only. The sidekick. Yeah. And the, the boy said, he was a dancer as well. And he was a rich person as well. He has a big white building in that Beverly Hill, as he said. Mm-hmm. And he has, he has like some cars like the, the Mercedes or grand cars that, and they trace back, they trace back, and they found, yeah, a dancer, a Hollywood agent like that. Mati Maiti, Mati Maiti, no, like that kind of name. And they found, yes, he has two sons and a daughter. And the daughter is still alive, 90 years old. Wow. And they go and see her and they ask her and whatever the boy said are true. And the, the boy said, I had a friend, a senator five, he said. Senator five, and they asked to the the lady, and yeah, and the lady said, yeah, yes, his his father has a friend, uh, even they had still have the photo, uh, Senator Ive, actually the name was Ive, I V E, Ive. We found that very interesting one. Yeah. What is the cause that some people can remember the past life and others cannot? Actually, our mind has that and memory. That memory is the memory is stored inside our bhavanga uh, mind. Bhavanga. Yeah, uh, but when we born, we are very really suffer, very painful. Then we forget this. Mostly people forget this, and because of the this present memories come in and like since we born we are so suffer, so painful, so we, we forget this. But some they are still remembering this. But these kind of cases uh, they remember in very young age only. Mostly they are remembering the past in young age only, up to five, four, five. Five is very rare or very like up to four years old. Uh, because the present life memories are not coming into their their brain, but the, the present life memories they start uh, memorizing present things and then the past forgetting. So, like we we learned our uh, primary, secondary, the lessons. Now we forgetting because we study more and more and more. I still remember things from that time. But you cannot remember exactly all the things. No, that's true. So we can get back these memories if you practice samatha. Hypnosis. Yeah, hypnosis. Uh, Hypnosis, uh, that's why people can talk uh, in a falling sleep state only. Because the mind is very calm, relaxed. Yes. Under hypnosis, eighty uh, percent of the US population was abducted by aliens and <laughs> you know, so hypnosis aliens. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm a little skeptical of the hypnosis also. It might work on some people, but I don't believe that it's easy. And at the night time so I'm sleeping with Uche, Uche sleep outside and then I was grinding the teeth so sometimes I'm thinking like whether I must go and check Uche. <laughs> what was your what happened with you? What was your past life? I wonder the death when <laughs> he's grinding the teeth. <laughs> it's never happened yet. <laughs> I wanna check whether I have this quali- qualifications or not. <laughs> Is that a point in a string and then this? Is, 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 is
talk him when he's sleeping. You must check. Yeah. Yeah, why are you laughing? But he didn't say anything, so. But then, but then he was laughing even more, so. <laughs> Apparently, it's really funny that I'm reading a lot of book in the I'm a bit curious about you were saying um, you point the the finger to uh, the matter and then you, you check the mind. Can you say more about that? Yeah, uh, you tell that you pointing the physical, checking the present mind. Because that is going up. Like going up, yes. Uh, yeah, like whatever sensations are throughout the body, you have to check the mind, liking and liking pleasant feelings, unpleasant feelings. If it is noticeable vibrations, you must aware as it is. No liking, no disliking. And some area, it will be unnoticeable. Sensations will be, vibrations will be not noticeable. You cannot create your body to happen as you like. But when I was joining that retreat, when I am tracing area like neck, the sensation was not noticeable. And I was, I was pointing that uh, sensations, physical, and the mind was unsatisfactorily tracing. I was not aware about my mind. I put more effort, focusing more with unsatisfactions, but here is not noticeable, here is so noticeable already. The mind tried to run already, but I tie my mind here, so the mind was not happy, very, very unhappy, very rushing to finish, very confusing. I was meditating, but I didn't get the stability of the mind, and the wisdom was not, not arise. I was confusingly meditating. So oh. it doesn't really matter where you go, as long as the mind is calm. Yeah, maybe some area, the four elements are in balance. And you just aware it without liking, without disliking. So what you have to be checking is the mind, not the physical. Let the physical happening as it is, let it be. But I feel the physical gets out of balance because of the mental. Can that be true? Yeah. Because sometimes yeah, I feel I feel course. something here, for example. I I I so I point it, I check it, it disappears. But then one minute later, there's again some kind of strange feeling. Yeah. So is that it's you know I feel when I'm doing something, walking or sitting, there is no pressure there, there is no heaviness, but there is a tangible feeling. Does that appear from the mind on the body? So. There are four causes for your physical process to be changing. Right. Karma, Seda, Udu, Ahara. Action, mind, weather, food. For example, standing meditation. At the beginning, your feet has no tension yet, no hotness yet. But because of your action, and maybe 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, the tension, the hotness arises. It is because of the action, karma. But some people, like two persons standing together, so because of the actions, uh, the hotness, the tension should be the same. But one person looks very calm. One person looks very panicked. It's going to die. My feet is going to burn. And because of attachment is so strong of self, cannot bear the pain. And my oh, feels along the hotness, feels along the tensions, and it becomes worse and worse and worse and worse. It's because of the mind. That person, this person is accepting. Okay, let it be. There's a nature, cause and effect only. The mind is calm, so it's not worse and worse and worse. That he's knowing well, that is nothing, just arising and that rupa klapas. One, one rupa klapa arise and it shows the strongest nature of elements, hot nature. 
and passed away. Another Rupa Kulapa replaced and showed again the hot nature and passed away. So that hotness is not permanently existing, arising and passing away. He's knowing this. So the mind is calm. So because of the mind, it is not, not causing wars. But this person, the mind, is creating hot, hot, hot. And because of that, it's hotter and hotter and hotter. So the mind really create. If you're thinking, oh, I think my feet is going to burn. Oh, I think whether it will be burned and it will really burn. That's, that's called Seitaza Rupa. And this, because of actions, changes, is called Kamaza Rupa. Uduja Rupa and Aharaja Rupa. So probably the feeling came back because my mind was not accepting it totally. Yeah. If you do the cause, there will be the effect. That only that. And if your mind is, oh, it's nothing. It's normal. It's, it's no I, no you. Just a physical process, cause and effect. And the mind will have no problem. And the mind is not creating the physical changes to be worse and worse and worse. Can you please explain again um, your kind of interpretation of that? Um, like the present mind compared to the past mind? Okay. Okay. You were talking about. Uh, okay. So just now I was talking about Yotao Nanshu, pointing the physical and checking the mental. And now, pointing the mental, the previous minds, and checking the mental, the present mind. So last one second. Last one second, so your mind was thinking about someone, uh, drifted in the thoughts, but you were aware of what I was thinking. And you are, and this is a present mind. The, that was, drifted mind was the past minds. So because of drifted minds, what is affecting at the present minds? That is uh, pointing the mental, checking the mental. Pointing the past mental process and checking the present mind. That is not talk, not should like that. So that past minds uncontrollable, habitual, subconscious. Habitually, it will be going on this process. For example, like uh, if you had an argument with somebody, angrily talk with someone, and the meditation time is up and you come and meditate, that kind of times, your mind will be memorizing that. Going back to the past, you won't be able to control your mind. So most of the times, it will drift in the past. And, but there will be the time, oh, I was thinking, I was thinking. And once you are aware you were thinking, okay, there was a cause, and now I'm getting the effect. And uh, you should not feel along the thinking, oh, that one is so bad, he talked to me this way. And you should stop. This is not a thinking time. That's Nantau Manchu. So this is the calming down time. And if you're meditating and you're concentrated a lot, the only thing you can say is, I was concentrated. I was concentrated. I was concentrated. No need to concentrate. No need to concentrate like you, you the mind has the nature of awareness. So you don't need to be concentrate searching what to what to focus. No, if it is quiet, you the mind's aware of the quiet quietness. But it's difficult to aware of the quietness. It's easy to aware of the noise noise. If the mind is, has nothing, you can aware nothingness, but it's difficult. But if it's noisy, you will say, I was hearing, I was seeing, I was moving. Like, like the example, like clapping the hand. The sound is noticeable, but before the sounds arise, there was nothing. That is difficult to aware. 
Mm-hmm. So if you are able to aware that you are aware that Nibbana nature. <coughs> Nibbana nature. So Nibbana nature, you can aware before you die. You, you can get before you die and the Nibbana nature you can get after you die. There are two kinds of Nibbana nature. So if you able to aware the calmness of the minds, your mind has no craving, no aversion, no delusions. You aware yourself, your mind, your self, and you are seeing the Nibbana at the present life. If you aware a split second, you are getting Nibbana, a split second. Very peaceful, very calm. Nibbana means uh, 
no craving, no aversions, no delusions, no lava, no dosa, no moha. Okay. If you see your mind, your mind is free from craving, aversions, there is no, no delusions. Hmm. If you do not know your mind is free from these craving, aversions, it's also with uh, delusions. It seems like it's so easy, but it's not easy. You'll be all enlightened. You must extend that calmness of the mind more and more and more and more. When you see Ferrero Rocher, and then your mind should free from craving emotions, no pleasant, no unpleasant, just seeing only. And the floor, seeing only, should be the same, equal. Ten years, give me ten years. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a Ferrero Rocher here, and the floor is there. You just, you know, I put a Ferrero Rocher, and I stand one with my feet, and I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> But now we can eat, huh? <laughs> 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 if there's a share, yeah. I'll 